Picture a peaceful suburban neighborhood. The gentle breeze whispers through the trees. Inside their homes, families sleep, unaware of the darkness lurking just around the corner. It's May 23rd, 1987, in Scarborough, Ontario. The air is heavy with the promise of a coming storm. This night will forever be etched in the annals of criminal history, a stark reminder of the mysteries the human mind holds. Meet Kenneth Parks, a 23-year-old man burdened by unemployment and gambling debts. Unbeknownst to him, he is about to become the central figure in a story that seems ripped from the pages of a psychological thriller. Suffering from insomnia, Kenneth retires to his couch, hoping for a few hours of sleep. What happens next is a chilling sequence of events that defies logical explanation. Kenneth, in the throes of sleepwalking, embarks on a 23-kilometer journey, his mind clouded by an unseen force. He gets into his car, a journey he undertakes unconsciously. His destination, the home of his in-laws, Barbara and Dennis Woods, in the nearby town of Pickering. The events that transpire next will leave an indelible mark on two families. Imagine waking up in a blood-soaked daze, your hands covered in something sticky and unfamiliar. Now envision the person staring back at you in the mirror is not a monster, but you. This is the terrifying reality Kenneth Parks faced. His in-law's house was in disarray. Dennis, his father-in-law, lay dead. Barbara, critically injured, struggled to comprehend the scene unfolding before her. Confused and horrified, Kenneth drives to the police station, the weight of his actions, or lack thereof, slowly seeping into his consciousness. I think I killed someone, he stammers, his words barely audible over the pounding of his heart. The investigation reveals a gruesome scene. Dennis Woods, stabbed multiple times, is a testament to the brutality of the attack. Barbara, though severely wounded, miraculously survives to recount the horrifying ordeal. All evidence points to Kenneth, his car at the scene, his blood-stained clothes, but Kenneth, adamant about his innocence, claims he remembers nothing. Could he have committed such a heinous act while sound asleep? The trial of Kenneth Parks becomes a landmark case, blurring the lines between sanity and the subconscious. The world watches as experts testify, debating the legitimacy of sleepwalking as a defense for murder. Sleep specialists are called to the stand, their testimonies painting a picture of a mind trapped in an unconscious state, capable of actions its owner could never fathom. The prosecution, however, argues that Kenneth's financial troubles and supposed tension with his in-laws point to a possible motive. The jury is left grappling with the perplexing question. Can someone be held responsible for an act committed while their conscious mind is asleep? In a controversial verdict, the jury acquits Kenneth Parks. The judge, bound by the jury's decision, declares him not guilty. While the legal battle ends, the questions linger. How could a man drive 23 kilometers, commit a murder, and have no recollection of it? Did his subconscious mind, fueled by stress and anxieties, drive him to commit a horrific act? The case of Kenneth Parks remains a chilling reminder of the mysteries of the human mind and the dark potentialities that lie dormant within us all. <laughs>